Good morning, church family. Welcome to our 9 a.m. service this morning here at Pearlside Copeland. Can we all rise to our feet? Let's give our God honor. Let's give our God worship. Amen. Come on. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come on, invite him in. Sing, come down. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bow. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bow. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Yes, God, we know that you're here with us. Oh, fill this place, oh God. Sing verse one again. As the spirit, as the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest. Sing fire and wind. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up your gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up your gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest so come on down. us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bow. When you feel the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bow. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Yes, Holy Spirit, you're invited in this place. Come on, church, let's sing that bridge. Sing Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. That's right, come on. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come rest. All we want you, Lord. You're all we want. We need your spirit, God. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all, all, you're we, all want. we want. You're all we want. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bow. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bow. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Oh, we invite you, Lord. I know you will fill me. Come on and give them praise and adoration. Soften my heart to break me apart. I need you to open my eyes to see that you're shaping my life. Oh, 
morning, that you're never going to leave us, you're never going to forsake us, but Lord, you are in our midst, you are in our hearts, Lord, you draw close to those who draw close to you, so Lord, we pray that we can draw closer to you this morning, gather around the table and say thank you, and offer up gratitude unto you, Lord. We may not deserve it, 
But Lord, through the eyes of your son, we can gather around. We can experience your great love and your great mercy. And in return and in response, Lord, of a life of worship, all we can say is thank you, Lord. So we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord. In your name we pray and we all say, amen, amen, amen. sing these songs as I often do but every song must end and you never do come on sing this chorus you know it so I throw up I've got, I've got one response, I've got just one move, with my arms stretched wide, I will worship you, so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. live this morning let's declare this bridge sing come on my soul oh come on my soul oh don't you get shy on me lift up your soul because you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise the lord come on oh come on my soul Oh, don't you get shy on me and lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those loves. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me and lift up your song. You've got a you've lion. Got a lion. And praise the Lord. One more time. Come on, come on. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those loves. Get up and praise the Lord. So I, so I throw up my head. Praise you again and again. Cause all that I have, it's all I got, Lord. It's all I'm left with, God. And I know, and I know, and I know it's not much. 
But I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah Let's sing the praise, sing, come on Come on my soul, oh don't you get shy Let's not waste this morning. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. One last time. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get, don't you get. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. One last time, so I, so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, last week, Pastor Clyde came and preached about how if God was so just and God did what he really wanted to do, we wouldn't be here. But he's such a just God, a merciful God. He's also a king. He's also a loving father. And we we take a look at this chorus. It's so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again and again. And I know it's not much. But I have nothing else fit. For a king, my king, your king, our king. And when we're left with nothing else, it's really the heart of worship that's going to allow us to praise him again and again and again and again. So we're going to go back into this course. We're not going to waste this time. Because I believe that there's many of us here. many of us here who have never experienced the love of God who might be so distant so far or many of us who it's been a while and God says that he's here he's right in front of you he's right around you and he wants to do something good and something great so when you have nothing else if you can't sing it's okay because it's not talking about a song it's talking about heart of worship it's talking about declaration of how good and God, how good and great God is, amen. So can we go back into this chorus? We're gonna all sing together. But let your heart cry out. Let your mouth cry out of his goodness and his gratefulness, amen. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again.
I don't want to go through the motions and go through a form and a, a schedule of just worship for 17 minutes and then my wife goes up and then does a welcome then I give a word and then there's a response and then I make a declaration and there's a benediction and then I say aloha ahui ho I want us to connect with God this morning and some of you are so far off and feel like you cannot and you've done this and you've done that you lay that down right now and you just start thanking him. Thank you for another opportunity, God, to breathe today. Thank you that I have this beautiful family. Thank you, Lord, that even in the midst of a rocky family, you're still here. You still show up. Thank you, Lord, that even in my storm, you're at peace giving me peace. Thank you, Lord, that even in the lion's den, where I feel like I'm getting torn to pieces you give me the strength to overcome thank you Jesus that even in the fire that I'm not alone I'm with Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and you God are standing with me in the fire God so thank you in your own way without anybody looking between you and God start thanking him giving him gratitude and if there was one final thing that we could hang everything on, it's his sacrifice on the cross where he eliminates the penalty that we were supposed to receive, but he took it anyway. So Jesus, thank you. I'm going to remix it. We're going to go to communion right now. So if you have your elements and you were waiting for the end, we're going to do that right. We're going to go to the table right now and express our gratitude. Peel back that first layer. And Father, this is the representation of your bread, your body broken for us. Breaking off the hardened hearts, breaking off the calluses, breaking off the chains, breaking off the things that would have us live our old ways and run back to our old life. God, you are calling, calling us into a deeper level of relationship with you. Forgive us, God, for making it about something else. Forgive us, God, about making it about busyness and making it about chasing our worldly dreams, desires, possessions. God, we want to chase after you right now and say thank you. Say thank you. So, Lord, hear the meditations of our heart in these next 30 seconds before we partake of the bread. We thank you, Lord. sing that chorus and I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross because here we are Lord Thank you. 
for the bread that we are going to break together in remembrance of your broken body. You may partake of the bread at this time. And peeling back the next layer, the cup represents his blood poured out for a multitude of sin, cleansing you. There is nothing that you have done that would disqualify you if you just allow his blood to cover your sin. As we come to this table, we remember his blood being poured out, making us brand new, making us a new creation. Father, thank you, Lord, that you cleanse us from the inside out and making us brand new, white as snow, separating our sin as far as the east is from the west. We thank you for this cup. In your name, Jesus, we pray. You may partake of the cup at this time. As the ushers come around with the baskets there, you can throw your opala, your, your waste and your rubbish there. Along with throwing away your rubbish, throw away the things that might be holding you back. Throw away the things that you feel that is tripping you up on the inside. Throw away anything that might be hindering your walk with him. It's like a symbol. Like I'm going to throw not just my rubbish away. I'm going to throw my past away. I'm going to throw all the things that I always run back to. Guilty pleasures. I want to throw it in that waste basket so that it doesn't just become a religious practice. But it's a declaration of gratitude saying, I want to be brand new. I want to be made whole. I just don't want to go through another experience and then leave the same. I want to leave different. So, Father, all across this place, as we throw our thing away, let us also throw off everything that hinders our relationship with you. We thank you so much for this worship team getting us into that place to honor you and to lift you up in preparation for the word of God that will not return void, but it will accomplish what it was set out to do. In your name, Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Let's give God some praise this morning. morning. Good morning. Before you take a seat, can you go and give a fist or a high five to your neighbor? Tell them you are brand spanking new this morning. Good morning and welcome to Pearlside Church Kapole. My name is Ray. I'm one of the leaders here. If you are visiting us for the first time, Welcome to our home. Welcome to our family. It is not by accident that you are sitting in the seat that you are in this morning. God brought you here and we're so excited for what God has for you this morning. Continuing our series, uh, we change it up a little bit this morning. We did communion in the beginning, so I'm going to give Wade a hot second to drink his cup of water. He gave me the shake that he's ready. So um, please welcome, give me the word today, Pastor Wade in. Once again, Francis and the team, thank you for, I, I like being prepared. I, I prepare for you. They didn't prepare for that. And sometimes you got to roll with a curve, curve ball and it always reminds me, does God have the permission to come into your life and make a change? Does God have the permission to alter the schedule of your day, the schedule of your week, your five-year plan? Does God have an opportunity or do we make it and say, God, you bless it? Can we get to the place in the posture where God can come in at any moment and do a little twist and do a little turn because when those moments and posture happens, you can see God move. Can somebody say amen? I hope you missed me because I missed you. A lot happened in a couple of weeks. President almost, former president almost got killed this close. You talk about millimeter. Now, don't you, some of you guys are about to say amen. Like, no matter where you sit on the side, we pray for God puts in position certain leaders. God puts 
leaders into those places so our opportunity as Christians is not to criticize but to pray. We're supposed to pray. We're supposed to encourage. They're fallible human beings like you and I, so we need to pray for our leaders. Can somebody say amen? I was in the East Coast, South, kind of in Florida. I've never been that East. And then all of a sudden, Y2K24 was about to happen. I don't know what you experienced, but I'm like on the mainland, far away from my family and my kids, and I'm seeing alerts like banks are shutting down, you can't access, there's a no-fly zone, they've grounded all these planes, people are not getting paychecks, so I'm thinking in my mind like when it was 1999, and they said on the strike of midnight, there was going to be a shutdown of the world. So anyone that's kind of like 30-ish and above, say amen. You remember. It was all going to go. So you guys like ran up your credit card. Because you weren't going to have to pay the bill afterwards. But God is in control. I was out on the East Coast. I don't call it East Coast, but East in Florida. By the Alligators. For a conference. It was called the Build Conference. They got the North American pastors and leaders together to get encouraged. And people ask me, what's your takeaway? I'm going to give you a short one. There was a lot of amazing messages, but my intention was to build with other leaders that are walking in a season that I'm walking in. Pastor Billy connected me with a bunch of pastors from New Mexico to Boston, all the way down in Florida so I could build with people that are doing the same things that we are trying to do here in the islands. I had an interaction with a pastor that almost turned into an altercation, almost turned into a fight. And you know me, I don't shy away from that type of experience. The first moment I met this guy, I haven't seen him in 20 years. 20 years ago, I'm at a conference in PI, in the Philippines, in Manila. I'm just trying to worship the Lord and then go to the workout facility in the hotel with me and Pastor Tarn that was here about two weeks ago. And Pastor Billy was there as well. There are witnesses so you can verify the moral of the story. We're working out in a gym that has a boxing ring in the middle. And this pastor that is there is in his 30-something. He's yoked out of his mind, super athletic and strong. And he has the wild idea to tell these young 20-somethings, I want to grapple. As I was like, shoot, let's go. At that moment, I was barely 200 pounds. I could lift maybe about 185, but I had a heart of a lion. I will not back down. I will show up. And so we square off in the middle of a boxing ring like Manny Pacquiao in Manila. And he has this like gorilla look, attacks me. I slip his attack, get to his back, and I sink in a rear naked choke to tap me out. And then he tells me it was a fluke because I thought we were wrestling. Let's run it back. Let's see if that was for real, real. And we did it again, and the same thing happened. In a matter of two minutes, I was able to take his neck and choke him out. That was 20 years ago. So 20 years, fast forward the tape. I have not seen him until this conference in Florida. And we bumped shoulders, and he's like, I know you. <laughs> Didn't remember my name. I remember his name. He said... I've been training <laughs> 20 years. He's been training. He says, I got jujitsu guys in my, in my church and they come to my garage and we battle and we got better and I got better. And he looks at me and is like, let's run it back. There's a place right there in the sanctuary, nice carpeted area. Let's go and roll together. Because what we did in Manila was a fluke. And this was the moment he realized that he done messed up. 
it was like that office moment if you ever watched The Office. And you're in this little awkward interaction, and then you just want to look to the camera just like this <laughs> and be like, should I let him know that within the last 10 years, I've been on the mats battling week in and week out. And this has happened in my mind, going from white to blue to blue to blue to blue to blue. Everybody knows that ever trained you, you're just going to stay in blue. Purple to brown to brown to brown to brown. And I was like, Lord, just can I have this one? Can I have this one where he instigated with me? And I just want to give him the love of God and lay some hands on him. But I did not. And I stepped back. And I just said, hey, God bless you. I know you want to roll with me. I know you want to exchange. And then I just said, oh, I'm ass. Like, you inspired me to continue my journey in jujitsu. Just so happens, I just got my black belt. And then you could see his countenance change. Because there's a difference in garage training and then doing the real deal. I could have. Went in my flesh, but I was there to build with people, not break down. So I want him to come to Hawaii. I want him to speak to you all. I want to take him to our Jiu-Jitsu Academy. I want to take him surfing. I would never have that opportunity if I went with a spirit of pride. And so what was my takeaway? I want a battle. <laughs> that might be easy for you. And some of you are new, like, I don't get it. Like, I like to have these challenges. I like to argue with people. I like to get to that place. It's like, is this, are we fighting? Are we, not, are we good? I kind of like that in my flesh. But God was teaching me, just humble yourself and build with these humans. So somebody give me an amen for that start. Open up your Bibles, Matthew 22. In your small group discussions this week, it's going to be based off a story that parallels this one. It's going to be in Luke 15. I wanted to give you the director's uncut look. Matthew 22 gives you that extra piece of the story, a parable, the parable of the wedding feast or the parable of the wedding banquet. Understand some cultural context of weddings. Back then, you would prepare, and you would sit down with families, and you would sign a contract, and at that contract moment, you were officially married, but you couldn't touch your wife. You couldn't touch your groom for almost an, an entire year so that they could prepare for the most epic party that would shut down the city. It would shut down the city for an entire week for the festivities and the celebration for a wedding that was about to take place. So when Jesus is talking about this parable, trying to make a connection with the audience and his people, they got excited because they knew what special things happen at a wedding party. They got four DJs coming in. The wine is flowing. The food is amazing. And so as he's sharing the story, people are leaning in how he's going to make a connection to the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 22. Jesus spoke to them again in parables saying the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered and every cut, the tomahawks, the ribeyes, all of that is ready for y'all. Come to the wedding banquet, but... 
they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business, another to the football games that are happening on Sunday when you're supposed to be here. Anyways, the rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners, go to the highways and byways and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out to the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless, and then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot, and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are invited, but few will be chosen. Lord, that was a lot of verses. Let your word, though, go deep. Let there be clarity. Let there be understanding that those that hear this message will not just hear words for word's sake, but they would hear and receive the word like a seed. Plant that seed deep into our souls in Jesus' precious name and all of God's people said, amen. Ever created a party? Send out an invitation? You send out an invitation and you want their RSVP. I'm pretty good at acronyms. Didn't know what RSVP stood for. I thought it was English. There's a little French nest to it. It actually means Riponde. S'il vous plaît. R, répondé, respond. S'il vous plaît. What is s'il vous plaît? That's like one of the first things we learn of France next to French fries. Is s'il vous plaît and oui, oui. <laughs> I got one other one. But I can't say it from this pulpit because it is not appropriate. But if you ask me between services outside of the campus, I'll tell you what it is. Respond, please. He puts on even a plus one. And some of you guys with big fam families, you turn the plus one into plus seven. And then you invite them to the party Hawaiian style. He puts out an invitation. And when my wife and I did it, she said, expect that 10% of the people that you invite. So if you have 300, 30 of them are not going to either show up or respond. Imagine that 10% are not going to be coming to the party. And I was like, I'm offended. This is a beautiful engagement of our lives together. I want everybody that we care about to be in that moment to celebrate. She says, this is the reality. You send out an invitation. 10% is not going to show up. I go on my social media. You ever seen that one video where the little boy is having a birthday party? His mom sends out an invitation to all his childhood friends at the school. They had a huge pizza party. It was all decked out at Chuck E. Cheese. All the decorations, all the balloons, and nobody showed up. It breaks my heart. I've seen that live. So then when Jesus is telling this story to an audience that understands the significance of a wedding and how powerful the wedding feast is, that they're going to party for a week straight, and he's going to give the best spread. It's not going to be just like dry chicken breast. It's going to be the amazing cuts of filet mignon and the ribeye and the all other meat because I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan. It's going to be a party, but as he invites, no one comes to that first invitation. So he's breaking it down to the chosen people of Israel. The Jewish children of God set apart because God made a covenant with them. And none of them were going to show up and believe in the invitation. So he says, okay, let me sweeten up the deal. Invite them again. And still they say, I cannot show up. I've got to attend to my field. 
I have to attend to my business. Your business is too much for me. I need to do what's right for me in this season. So then Jesus says, go to the Gentiles. The ones that are not covenant chosen as the children of God, I want you to go to everybody else on the streets, on the highways. Friends, this is good news for us. Unless you're Jewish, but we're in Hawaii, so not a lot of you might be a chosen son or daughter in a covenant, covenant relationship by the Jewish faith. He said, go out to the highways and byways and invite those that you see. Some might be good, some might be bad, but let them come to the party. And when they come to the party, the groom's family exchanges these wedding clothes for the puka shirts and the puka shorts and the puka necklace that they came rolling in with for wedding garments. And they were supposed to make a change. And the Bible said, and that's why I did Matthew 22. In Luke 15, it leaves out this one portion. So you guys can reference it in your small group. In Matthew 22, it talks about that one guy. And I was like, feel bad for him. Because he showed up to the invitation. At least he showed up. He came to the party and he said, why did you not change? Why are you still holding on to the old ways, the old puka shorts, the old puka shirt, the puka shells, and the big puka that's in your heart? Why are you holding on to your old life? That's what Jesus was doing in that moment as he was talking to people that understood when you come to a wedding, you got to change. You cannot just come into the banquet all raggedy. And so the point that he's trying to make is, all of us come to him by invitation with our self-righteous clothes, and he wants to exchange our self-righteousness for his righteousness. He wants us to put on something new. He wants to put on his garments. He did all of the sacrifice that we talk about with our communion, and he says, I want you to put that thing on, and the one was sent out, even though he was invited and showed up to the party to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth because he did not want to change. Don't be that person in the yearbook that writes when you're a senior, love you like a brother, stay cool, don't ever change. Can you imagine, you, Uncle Clarence, if you still operated and acted like an 18-year-old and you just listened to the mantra and just say, I'm just going to do me. I'm never going to change. God wants us to go from glory to glory, and we can only get from glory to glory if we accept his righteousness, put that on, and Michael Jackson make that change. There's human responsibility for us to go and take off the old and put on the new. Can somebody say amen? I wish it was easy. I wish that it was just God would just snap his finger and then we could live an amazing stress-free life and then go straight to heaven. So if you're in a season and you're struggling like, God, just show me all the different steps to get A, B, and C. So, Because I know that I'm supposed to be here. If God did that, you might be too afraid to take step number one. We're in Florida. And on our downtime, it was very, very few because we were just always just reading the Bible, praying. And there was this one little moment in Orlando, Florida, because we stayed at a hotel called SeaWorld. Orlando Renaissance something. And right across the street was SeaWorld. I'm thinking about San Diego Zoo or San Diego SeaWorld. Very easy, light, like an aquarium. No, not in Florida. Massive roller coasters. Now, I'm not an adventurous person on that front. All my sons are. And they just would rush those type of things. Pastor Billy is like an extreme, like would do death defying, jump out of airplane and all that stuff. So he wanted to charge the largest roller coaster. And I didn't want to look like a scaredy cat so I just walked along with him with Ray with Pastor Paris's wife Twinkle and with Naomi Pastor Billy's wife 
We get in line like many rides are. As we get closer, we see like one or two people like walking the opposite direction, like a salmon swimming upstream. I'm like, you got to use the bathroom. Why are you leaving your spot in line? Because I could see that there's only one major drop and there's one little loop-de-loop. All good. But as you level up and you get a different vantage point, not one or two people came. At this point, 13 people, I counted them, 13 people walked off the ride. Now, you have to understand about my dear wife. She'll try certain things, but when she makes up her mind about something, she's adamant and lets me know. She's like, I can't do this. I said, no, girl, you're going to do this. And she looks at me and says, do you want me to be pissed at you for a week? I said, piss, sorry. And I said, is this worth the battle? Is this worth the fight? I'm like, girl, you want to overcome your fears. You're going to have to jump on this roller coaster. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be sitting right by. She said, do you want me to be pissed at you for an entire, not a day? So I let them go. And I jumped on this roller coaster. And Pastor Paris' wife had a, a scream it wasn't one of those just one. It was a scream of terror because she literally is afraid of heights. And I'm like, why would you even choose this ride? I'm just trying to navigate my own fear. I'm trying to navigate my own insecurity and my own, like, I'm just trying to stay in the zone. And I, I can hear your terror. So now your terror is jumping on me. I'm terrified for me and you. It wasn't just a one down. And a loop-de-loop. It's like seven major crazy drops. At one point, I flew out of the thing. I'm hovering out of my seat. I said, Jesus, I'm going to meet you right now. I'm going to come and meet with you right now. And it was finally over. And I overcome. I'm telling you, I'm, our walk with God is this amazing, death-defying roller coaster that sometimes it's just a climb. Sometimes out of the blue is a major drop. You can coast it and cruise through. That's an option. It is, op it is optional to show up and say yes to God and take step after step, after step, knowing that you're going to have to go through a season in the lion's den. Knowing that you're going to go through a season in the fire. Not by the fire. Roasting marshmallows. Like, literally in the fire. And I wish it was easy. I wish you could just get to a great place of destiny and purpose outside of the roller coaster ride. But some of you that have been walking with God even for a season know that that's not true. That you have to go through stuff. You have to go through loss. You have to go through pain. How would you ever know the good stuff that God has for us unless we go through the opposite? So we have to pay attention because our attention, attendance at the future wedding banquet with Jesus is optional. You're not mandated to do it. It's, it's an option. And some of us will sh just go through life Choosing not to run after the invitation. Some of you showed up today and is waiting for me to do something magical for you. That's why in worship I paused and I stopped. I said, this is not what I can conjure up. God, I need you to move. God, I need you to soften a heart. God, I need you to mold the heart so that when the word of God hits and I read this passage from Matthew 22, I want it to stick. I wanted to produce fruit. I wanted to be evident in your life so that when I talk to you, I can hear the fruit of the Spirit coming out of your mouth because you choose this day to serve the Lord. I love that passage. Put it up in your, in your, in your, in your living room. As for me and my house, as for me and this house, we will serve the Lord. Don't you love those amazing Serve team shirts that say Koku on them. Can we give it up to Joe Miller and his team for designing? You're like, 
where can I, how come there's no merch table? How come there's no where you can buy it? Because you can't buy that shirt. You got to be like, how can I serve? I'm not begging you to serve. I, we have massive needs in the kids' church. Tons of needs in youth ministry. Ask Mr. Stan back there, our sound man. He didn't even make the Instagram cut and he had to make his own invitation. <laughs> not throwing shots at Marissa. I love the post because uh, it was great. I even reposted it. Stan like all left out. A little. I want you to serve. I found my wife in my life serving God. Some of you single guys should have said amen already. Give me a Kokua shirt. I'll serve every week. Until you bring me my helpmate. The way God, the, the place that God is going to take us, friends, it cannot just be us. It cannot just be the leadership team. I need somebody to come up to me while and be like, I feel like God is calling me to this remote country in South Pacific. I mean, okay, great. Let's create a plan and get you ready to go out into this place so that you can walk out your call. It's optional, friends. You don't have to serve. You don't have to do it. You can just show up. I'm going to preach. We're going to worship. But if you ever wanted to experience God's best, if you ever wanted to walk in his fullness, you could go downstream and take the easy route. But the one that God has laid out for you are going to have twists and turns and loop-de-loops and drops. Can somebody say amen? amen? We move on to point number two or else I'm just going to go in circles over here. He shows grace to those who show up. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So God, so go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. Every single year, I put on a poster board paper my prayer list it's pretty similar from every year I just kind of add a couple of different things outside of praying for my family outside of praying for you as a congregation outside of different things that God puts on my heart it's a very simple bulleted poster that is in my prayer closet this year I did something different I added one little line there that God would give us properties and buildings uh, spaces where we could do community outreach. I put that in January 1st of 2024. January came through, nothing. February came through, nothing. March, April, May, June. And in this last couple weeks of just praying and believing for God to do something and open something up, at the conference, I had this wild and crazy idea to find some kind of office space here in Kapolei where it's really difficult to find and something opened up. A place that we could have amazing classes like growth track and discipleship track and trainings for worship and training and gathering for youth ministers and youth gatherings. All of those things were part of this prayer idea that I had on my paper and God was opening up and I was like, man, you did it, Lord. And God's like, that is just scratching the surface, son. And then I reach out to my man in my small group. It goes by Principal Tommy. I'm not going to look at him right now. Because <laughs> if I do, his guns are out. And he might shoot me because he works out in the gym. And he, I said, what are some of your needs at your school? I said, well, just, let's just meet at the school. And so we walk around, and I just start looking at the area. And I said, man, how could we serve? How could we partner? How could we be a, be a blessing? Because we have a youth group, and you guys have kind of a youth thing going on. Let's try something here. And then we just prayed. And then I had this crazy idea to paint some walls and to get one of our artists, Ka'ua, who just lays the canvas. And then we have another artist, Whisper Doodles, that can lay the murals. And you've seen little stickers that you have on your cup 
of all these characters and the word of God because we're living in a day where they keep kicking God out of schools. But I'm glad that there is a school that is willing to have the Bible be front and center because when we walk into that new building, you're going to see this massive passage that talks about the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world, friends. They're the Lanakila Baptist warriors. Can you guys say whoop whoop back there? Oh, man, they need to work on That's why we need to get the word there. Got to give them some strength and some confidence. I know they're the warriors. They're going to be warriors for God. So we have the Ephesians 6 passage on the left side that's going to come up. And it talks about putting on the full armor of God so that every single day when they walk into their campus, the word of God is seeding into their life. And they can look at that and just say, I am meant for something more than just coming to school and receiving some kind of math application and some kind of English. Let the word of God go deep. And so we serve, we paint, Ku'u and I, hours upon end, Principal Tommy comes up to me and literally hands over the keys to the school and say, this is our school. This is our community. When I say our we have a responsibility to go ahead and partner with because we can say a lot of things from the pulpit about the next generation until you be about it and put your feet there, then it's just all, what the Hawaiians say, wah. It's just talk. It's just talk. So I'm excited to be able to walk and to build. This is beyond my natural ability. But when we show up, I love what he talks about grace, that where you are weak, where human efforts end, that's where God shines. Because then you can't get the credit because it's only him. It's only he can do those certain things. When we show up, God's grace shows up. Amen. We'll move into our last point here. What you put up with, you will put on. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there that was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the servants to tie him hand and foot and to set him out. I've been to weddings with the strict dress code, black collar, black tie event, and I roll up with my Sig Zane shirt and my pants, and I get, I get the looks. In this passage, in this story, and he's sharing Jesus, sharing the parable, it's remind, it, it reminds me of his first experience at a wedding where he did the same exact thing, where the wine ran out, Jesus was attending a wedding, his mom is the wedding planner coordinator, runs to Jesus and say, you need to do something. He says, it's not my time to flex and to show this power, but because Jesus is kind and generous and gracious, he goes outside of himself and he looks what's nearby and grabs water, turns it into wine so that the party can continue. It's not a flex of turning water to wine. It's his demonstration of kindness, goodness and grace covering up a place of lack where the groom's parents were supposed to provide and they could not do it in their own strength so here comes Jesus pouring out an amazing miracle because he is gracious and covers a multitude of iniquity and lack so now he's sharing a parable that might be a metaphor but he's saying you guys need to listen and hear not just see the invitation and don't respond he says rsvp see if we'll play please respond to the message that is being sent out and walk in your calling. How could you ever walk in your calling and come to the banquet if you don't take off the old and put on the new? Okay, then what is the old? Your old mindsets and habits. Well, got me this far. Got me this far. I'm just going to do me, man. Just mean mugging through life. I do that too. I get into a zone. But he says, take that mindset off. 
Put on a new mindset. See with my perspective. Look with my eyes. Heart that needs to be renewed and refreshed and restored. Yet you keep coming here with a hardened heart. That change happens when we have a relationship with him. When you practice, it takes work. Putting on his righteousness, our hearts change. We get to come to this amazing banquet one day. So when we come and gather like this and worship, this is practice for what we're going to do in heaven one day. So if singing is not your thing, heaven's going to be awkward for you. There's a lot of singing. There's a lot of rejoicing. There's a lot of dancing, praising, and your voice will actually sound good then. So I'm saying, amen. I can't wait for that wedding banquet one day. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for calling out the moral of the story, which is to take off the old, put on the new garments, and tell people to do the same. That we don't just take off the old and put on the new for ourselves, but we go out and compel people to do the same. Just like you told the servants to go out again and go to the streets, the highways, and the byways, and to invite people, and they might not respond, but our job is not to convert people. Our job is to throw out and scatter seed and to sow seed and to invite and to invite. And there might be a time where someone responds, Riponde, s'il vous plaît. Someone RSVPs and decides to show up to the amazing banquet party that you have laid out for us. And no matter what we have to go through to get to that moment and that place, we say, Lord, here we are. As for me in this house, we will serve you. We won't serve our busyness. We won't serve our fleshly desires. We want to take care of your business, kingdom business, and not get caught up with excuses of busyness, but your business. Reprioritize, restructure, recalibrate our hearts so that we could walk in the fullness of that purpose. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed, there might be a few of you that were literally invited to come to church today. On behalf of me and the leadership team here and your friends, we believe wholeheartedly that it is not an accident. You are here on purpose. Though you had to make a choice, you made the right choice. And as you're here and you're hearing this message about attending this wedding banquet, and maybe not all of it makes sense, but here's the clear point and moral of the story. It's time to choose. You can serve yourself and your old ways, or you can serve his way, and you can walk in his way, and you can go on his path. And his name is Jesus. And it starts by confessing with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead. Believing in your heart that that resurrection happened. And the Bible promises your deliverance that you would be saved. So Lord, as we pray today, we don't reduce you to this little thing that fits into our heart. Lord, we confess with our mouth that you're Lord. We confess with our mouth that we want to follow you all the days of our life. Lord Jesus, be the Lord of our lives. Be the king of our hearts. Help us walk in your ways and follow you all the days of our life. Thank you for purpose. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for your grace. In your name we pray. And all of God's people say Amen. Can we give God some praise for those that made a decision today to follow him? And then, Ray, I'll turn it over to you. 
I'm just going to give you a little tip. Don't ever ride roller co- a roller coaster with pastors. They turn everything so spiritual. When I got to the top and I, I knew my limitations and I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go on there. Where he's like, how are you going to overcome fear? How are you going to be strong and courageous like Joshua? And then Billy's like talking away like, see, that's what fear does. Fear just, um, it, it multiplies and it just, it's like contagious. Because Naomi's like, I'm also not going to go on the ride too. So just... Just don't go with pastors on any type of thing because everything turns extra spiritual. At this time, we're going to, re- we're going to receive our tithes and offerings. And this uh, scripture comes from Hebrews uh, chapter 6, verse 10. And it says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you so much for this word, God. And sometimes we can go through life, Lord, wanting the praises and applauses and likes and hearts and followers from people, Lord. But this reminds us, this scripture reminds us that our audience should be of one, that you don't forget what we do, that you don't forget the sowing and the generosity and the outpouring, Lord, of the extension of love that we give to those around us. So I pray this morning as we give our tithes and we give our offerings with a cheerful heart, Lord, that we would look to you, God, because you have validated us and you love us so much. So we thank you that we can be a blessing to those around us. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, amen. I just have one announcement. I've been so excited because I have been waiting almost six months to do this again because the last time we did this was in December. We are going to have our refresh service this coming Thursday, August 1st at 7 p.m., outside in the Pico. We did this in December. It was so amazing. We're going to have light refreshments. The worship team is going to set up. We're going to have lights. You guys can bring your chairs, your blankets. You can bring whatever you want, but most of all, bring someone with you. Even if they don't like worship's not their thing. They can sit, they can listen, and we can see what God does in their life as our worship bring our worship team brings this amazing time. So this Thursday, August 1st, 7 p.m., meet us outside for our refresh service. Pastor Wade. All right, let's all stand up to our feet to receive the benediction, which is a blessing from God to apply the word that has been sowed into your heart. May you go out into the streets, just like in the passage in Matthew 22, and have eyes to see those that need to have an invitation. You might be the only connection to Christ that they will see. Extend that invitation of love. Extend that invitation of aloha and watch God move in and through your lives. May you be blessed, and let's give God one more round of applause as we go ahead and walk out this word in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. Ahoy ho.